Hey guys, Captain CA here for Flats Class YouTube. Today, we're gonna learn all about the bucktail jig. That's right. This simple little bait right here will help you out when conditions are tough. You're fishing pressured water. You're wanting to finesse fish. You're wanting to search bait fish. The bucktail jig, well, it really is an all around lure, even though there's nothing really to it. So I'm gonna sit down, set up some of my materials, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what it catches, how you work it, and whatnot. In the meantime, I want you to check out this video where I was fishing with my wife, Blondie, catching snook on bucktail jigs. Better one. I threw all the way to the far side of the hole, Blondie. <sighs> Burning it up. The snook. Nice. The Eldora experiment. Talk about a skinny water fish. It's doggone near dry in here. Yeah. <laughs> no net. Yeah. The fish in Louisiana took care of that. Okay. What is our goal here? I'm gonna try to jump down. Hook this up right there so I don't lose it. All right, buddy. Come on. That's what I'm talking about right there. Caught him on a, one of my all-time favorites, a bucktail jig. How do you like that? Raymarine put me in the back of the creeks. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put him back in the drink. Biting down on my thumb. Go on, swim away. I love supporting all these Flats Class YouTube videos with that GoPro footage because you can see the stuff working in the field that I'm trying to teach you right here in the classroom. All right, let's talk a little bit about the species that you might encounter that would fall prey easily to the bucktail jig. Trout, redfish, and obviously snook. I mean, those three for sure. Here's some species that you don't think of off the top of your head. Triple tail, cobia, even tarpon, bonefish, Spanish mackerel, snapper. It's endless is what I'm really trying to tell you. The possibilities of what species you want to target with a bucktail jig is truly endless. There's guys up in the Northeast that are targeting bluefish and stripers with them. Uh, there's, there's guys in North Carolina and South Carolina targeting big flounder with them. I mean, guys, learn how to tie these things up or commercially buy them. They're cheap. They're very cheap. And I'm going to get into next how you can either use them as a search bait or you can use them as what I would call a finesse slash catch bait uh, that, will, that will really change the game for you. Now, I love using soft baits. I love using hard baits. But when I grew up, a lot of us threw bucktail jigs to catch just everything. And to this day, it's still one of my go-tos. And it's, it's a go-to because I like to actually tie them up and name them. And, and it's just fun. It's fun to create something and then go to the water and catch a fish on it. It's, there's nothing more rewarding. You don't have to be a fly guy to have a lot of fun creating your own lures. We're not gonna learn how to tie them right now, but we are gonna talk a little bit about what styles work best, you know, where you live. So let me change the camera angle and get going. So let's talk about a couple of styles that I would call our catch baits or finesse styles. Now I focus my efforts when I'm using these particular types of bucktail jigs and just hair jigs in general is what we're going to call them. I look for crustacean colors, colors that are, are crabby, 
or shrimpy or creature-like that probably will draw strikes from bonefish, redfish, uh, sometimes trout, you know, when, they're, when you're trying to, to catch them over grass. But these styles are going to be like skimmer head styles, such as this. You see how that, that bait looks? Now this one I did not tie. This is a commercially made one, but it's one of my better redfish jigs. I love fishing this thing, and it is dynamite to catch redfish on. Uh, got another one here by Hank Browns. It's very small, boxing glove style head. You see that? You'll also notice how small they are. Those small, finesse, more catch style baits really, really get the job done because fish that are pressured or fish that are in clear water or skinny water, they need smaller jigs. Now here's a cool one, like a micro shrimp, almost Ned-like in, in a way, that's tied by bugs and it's on a mushroom head so it stands straight up. This is a secret weapon. And we're actually gonna partner with bugs and do some stuff with them not only on this particular profile, but on several others, you wait till later in 2021, you're gonna see some cool stuff coming out of Flats class with that. And then another one that I like, this is something that I tie. Uh, this one I broke the hook on, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Uh, this is a little jig that looks a very shrimpy, super, super shrimpy. And I fish this over grass a little faster and it just rips the trout, just totally destroys the trout but I destroyed the hook on this one because I was pulling it over a bunch of limestone and caught, caught an itch. But when you look at all these colors, the one thing that you'll see in this style of bucktail other than the change in heads is the fact that they're all that organic brown, green, tan, uh, muddy colors that match the bottom. So when you're fishing tight to the bottom, dragging, slow hopping, just maybe swimming and letting it fall again, these are going to be the best bait. So very controlled, not too fast. These catch everything. Finesse, redfish, you name it, this is the deal. Now we're gonna talk next about some of the minnow style heads and how they'll work for you. So breaking off the catch or the finesse style, we're, we're working those browns, greens, muddy colors, tan colors working tight to the bottom. Let's talk about going fast. Let's talk about minnow patterns that just simply catch snook, trout, Spanish mackerel, mangrove snapper, all the, all the predators that focus on minnow patterns. So you're gonna do a lot more swimming with this style bucktail, burning it through dock lights, burning it through current seams, pitching it along mangrove edges for snook and mangrove snapper. And it's just a fast way to fish and you can use these as search baits and I often do, but still you have the opportunity because the heads are small um, and they don't make a big signature when they hit the water, you can still use them as a sight fishing bait. So colors for trout like white and pink, very popular. Again, that boxing glove style where it keeps that hook up where I can stop it in a pothole like a minnow just sitting on the bottom and then I can pick it up and swim it again. Uh, a pattern that I really like a lot is just, just an all white jig and then I'll take a Sharpie and I'll put a few bands in it to give it that banded like pinfish look. Uh, and that's so easy to do. You're basically tying up a simple white bucktail and you're just taking a Sharpie and giving it some a different, you know, breakup pattern that fish like. Uh, Anything that can go both ways, where it could be uh, like a mud minnow, something where you could still work it tight to the bottom. That's, that's a great color pattern, brown and, and over white. And these are commercially tied, these two. One's bigger for me fishing, you know, some, some deeper beach stuff. But this one here in particular, this is a spro, this is a quarter, but I use the eighth a lot and I burn it through dock lights. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you will not find a better snook jig if you're looking for numbers. If you like night fishing, you like fishing those docks, you're going to love this bait. And all you have to do is throw it in the dark side of the light and burn it right across the top where it's just swimming maybe a foot underneath the water. Twitch, twitch, rip, rip, twitch, twitch, rip, rip. And I'm telling you, you're gonna get some action on that bait. Now, the other nice thing about bucktail jigs is the resiliency. It takes a long time to tear them up. So in the past where you, you get plastic soft baits that might slide down the jig head a lot and you're always you know fixing them, meddling with them one way or the other, 
you'll notice that bucktail jigs, you don't have that issue. So they're great that way. And like I said, cost is pretty cool. And if you want to make your own, well, you've got that option too. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to send you away with a couple of sentiments that I hope you take to heart. Obviously, I can't teach you everything you need to know about bucktail jigs in one YouTube video. That's why I created a Flats Class University course. It's actually going to drop this week on waypointtv.com. And it goes more in depth on how you work these baits with some underwater footage and things like that. So I want you guys to promise me that you're going to go to waypointtv.com and watch this course. It's what we do at Flats Class. We do podcasts. We do virtual fishing schools. We have television shows. We do Flats Class YouTube. And if you like what you see here on Flats Class YouTube, come on, guys. Give us a thumbs up. We want to get your support. We want you to tell your fishing buddies. And that's how it works here. So if you like what you see, you like what you hear, and this is catching fish for you, subscribe. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson signing off.